Ten paces east. Chest of seven hundred thousand pounds. My servants, let's say. Come in, Tom Redruth. Come in, Williams. They got away, sir. They had a lugger tied up at Kit's Hall, sir. Aye. <laughs> you gave him a run for it, boys. They'll not be back. <laughs> Thank you, Tom Redruth. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. <laughs> Shh. Mum's the word. We'll take Redruth and Williams along, make sailors of them. We'll have favorable winds, a quick passage, and gold enough to play duck and drake with ever after. Eh, Hawkins? If you weren't so confounded exclamatory, Trelawney, we might understand you better. Just what is it you propose to do? Do? Fit out a ship, that's what I'll do. With a clue like this by Christopher, we'll have Flint's treasure if it takes a year. Can't you feel the deck under your feet and a good trade wind filling our sails? Oh, preposterous. A doctor can't go chasing across the world and leave his practice behind him. Hang your practice. I'm your practice. You think I'd put to sea without a ship's doctor? Besides, it's a risky business. We aren't the only ones who know of Flint's map. Those fellows who ransacked this in tonight are desperate men. Surely you don't fear them, Livesey? No. There's only one man I'm afraid of. Name the dog. You, sir. For you can't hold your tongue. Why, confound you, doctor. I'm no tittle-tattle. In a venture of this kind, I'd be silent as the grave. Now then, Harky. Tomorrow I start for Bristol to find a ship. Once you settle your affairs here, you and Jim can follow. Maroon, five years. And lived on goats and beans. the night. I dreamed a cheese. A toasted, mostly. You wouldn't have a rind of cheese about you, would you now? There's cheese by the hundredweight aboard ship. Now, if you could help me row a longboat. Don't says you bend on your men, says I. What might you call yourself, mate? Jim. Flag a truce! Ahoy! What fools cut a Bible? What did I say? No good will come of that, I said. Was it you, Job Anderson? Now Job can say his prayers. He's had his slice of luck, Job has. Cut a Bible. You'll all swing now. Then lay that talk down, Silver. This crew has tipped you the black spot in full council. The rules is you turn it over in duty bound and see what's wrote there. Thank you, George. You always was brace for business. Deposed and very pretty wrote. Your hand a writing, George. <laughs> You'm getting quite a leading hand in this here crew. You'll be captain next, I shouldn't wonder. You can't fool this crew no more, John Silver. And keep a sharp lookout on all sides. I keep a weather eye out for a man what's trying to get a foot in each camp and him with only one leg. You better come back with that map and the hostage, Captain Silver. Doctor! You could cut my good leg off afore I'd raise a finger against that there lad. Why, when he comes crawling into the fort half dead, I says to myself, you got to save that dear boy, John. Captain would wish it, Squire would wish it, and you'd wish it. So Captain Silver is minded to join us again, eh? I'll be honest and open with you, as I always am. Jim? My Hawkins shall come. You'll make a famous cabin boy, Hawkins. His mother may have something to say about that. She'd listen to you, sir, if she knew you were going. Until I've made up my own mind, I don't know what I could tell her. Tell her that in three weeks' time, three weeks, two weeks, Ten days, Jim Hawkins will be sailing with the choicest crew and the finest ship's doctor in all England. Will you, sir? To be sure he will, boy. Lord, love me, lad. Didn't you know that them as sailed with Admiral Ark had no speaking acquaintance with pirates? Listen, they boarded us. <laughs> Aye, Jim, you're the spitting image of me when I was your age. Head full of pirates. Yeah, but he'll find, same as I, that the sea be mostly hard work. 
And the biggest satisfaction a man gets is doing his duty. Quite right, eh, Jim? Come, Lizzie, shall we go aboard? But I just thought if he knew Billy Bones... Of course you did. Now, if you want to know about pirates, just you ask Captain Flint <laughs> why she can, uh, well, blow me down for an old sea calf. Do you know any pirates, says you? Not on speaking terms, says I. Yet here under my nose is Captain Flint. Ha-ha! <laughs> I'll wager you can't make her talk. Pirates, Captain Flint! Pirates! You're a smart one, Jim. Smart as paint you are.